What's up sports fans, welcome back to the channel. My name is Sadi and today we're making a clean and elegant title animation using DaVinci Resolve Fusion. In this first part, we will create the title itself, which you can use on top of your own footage. In a second video, I'll show you how to create the background animation as well. If you want, you can use the whole thing. As always, the project files are linked in the description so you can open these and work with me, or you can change the text and use these in your own projects. They're completely free for you guys. If that sounds good, let's get started. If you're a complete beginner and you aren't sure how nodes work or what Fusion is, you can watch my intro animation primer. That video covers everything in detail. I'm going to set up the project using the exact same method I showed in the primer. We're going to create a Fusion clip, five seconds long. Shift 5 to go into Fusion. I'm going to create a settings node. And I'm going to create a transform node, call it null. This will allow me to change the size of the composition when everything is done. I am also going to grab my swatches and I'll put it on the side. I'm going to create a base layer, pipe it in, make it a gradient, and pick screen color. I have the colors in my swatch. Change the other one as well. As a reference, I can bring in the video file of the background as well, and I'll show you what that looks like. There we go. We're going to create this background in the next part of the tutorial, the second part. All right, let's design the animation first. I'm going to need a text node. Type it in. Call it top. And type in smooth. I'm going to change the font. I'm going to be using free Google fonts. So if you want, you can use the same. Change the size. Next, I'm going to make two masks, rectangular mask. I'll put it here, connect it to the text, make it a little bit wider, and I don't need it to be that tall. I can move this up, and to see the center of my composition, it's a control G to show the guides. So I'm going to put my mask right here. And then I'm going to copy this whole thing. For the second one, I'm going to move the mask down here. Now to disable this view control, it's Control-K. And then I can move the mask. Actually, the top one needs a little bit of help first. Perfect. And now the bottom one. I'm holding down the control key to move in small increments. That's good. Right there is perfect. Okay. So now I have a mask on top and a mask on the bottom. If I move the text, let me pull up the view controls again, control K. So if I move the text, you can see the text is whole and this doesn't help me. And if I move the mask, this doesn't help me either. So what I'm going to do is create another mask. So I'm going to click on the, the mask, copy and paste. So this is going to create a copy of that mask. Okay. And then I'm going to invert and subtract. Now I can move the second mask 
to do the reveal that I want. So I'm going to go to keyframe number 40, animate this uh, position control, the center, and I'm working backwards. I'm going to go to zero, and then I'm going to move it up. Just like that. I'll do the same thing for the bottom as well. Click on this mask, copy and paste a copy of it, and then go to 40, animate the position, set a keyframe, and then go to zero and bring this down. Of course, we also need to subtract invert. There you go. This is the render range, zero to 149. That's five seconds long at 30. So I'm going to set this to 50 for now. So as you can see, these yellow markers, this is where the animation is going to loop right now. OK, so that's the first part of the animation. Next, I'm going to do some easing. So I'm going to go back into the mask that was animated, go to Spline. Hit this fit view, and now I can select both the keyframes and hit S. So right now, the S, the smoothing of the curve, means that it's ease in, ease out, right? Which is how I want it. But I want the ease out to be slower, way slower. So it's, it's like a weighted ease out. And I'll do the same thing for the other mask. And let's view it. So it's starting slowly, picking up speed a little bit, and then slowly coming to a stop, like that. So 0 to 40, that's my animation. Next, I want the letters to move up. So I'm going to add a transform node to the text. And I'm going to go to 40, move my render range up. And I can move this starting render range to, say, 30, 80, I would say. Not sure. Let's go to 40 and set a keyframe. And then let's go to 70, another keyframe. And now I'm going to move the transform up, like so. Okay. The only problem is I don't have a reference as to how far up I'm going. So let me create a small box so I have a visual reference while I'm working. Create a background, put a mask on it, and I'm just going to change the color to white for now. And let's say about this much. That looks good. OK, now let's go back to what I was doing for frame number 70. This is too high. I just need it to be right here. Right here is good. And then I'll do the same thing for the bottom part. So shift spacebar to bring up the select tool, XF to bring up a transform. And then this transform is on the bottom part of my animation, create a keyframe at 40 and another keyframe at 70. The one at 70 is going to move down just enough where the box is right now. I can disable the box. Okay. Now I'm going to add the easing to both my transforms. So it starts off slow, picks up a little speed, and then slowly moves down. Fit and window. Select both keyframes. I call this weighted ease out. Same thing for the other one.
There we go. And now let's go set our render range to 0 to 80. And test the animation. Okay, that looks exactly how I wanted it to look. Next, I'm going to create a second text. Pipe it in. Rename my nodes as I go. Lean animation. Change the font to something that works with Fire Sands. I think I'm going to go with Roboto. Okay. Next, I want to make this much smaller and I want to add some tracking to it. Like that. Okay, now the problem, the visual problem that we have right now is that because the letters are so far apart, you can't even tell where the words are ending and starting. So here's a little trick that you can use. Add some space between the two words, then track it. So the tracking is still pretty good, but you can fine tune how far you want those words to be because you want them to be legible. Okay, that looks better. So now what I'm gonna do is, remember that box that I made for reference right here? Let me turn it back on, this white box. We'll take that mask and delete the rest. Take this mask and I can put it on my text. So I can animate the text in the middle. So we're gonna go from 60 to 100. So let's increase the render range, go to 100. Height of the mask is gonna be what it is right now. And then at 60, the height's gonna be all the way down. And then I can add a spline curve to give it a little bit smoothness. A slow decelerating stop is also called easing out. That's what's going on here. Now let's look at it. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to move these keyframes back so that as the word smooth is splitting open, it should reveal what's inside. Okay, so for that, I'm going to the keyframes. And then I will also, holding down control, I'll click on the mask and that will show its keyframes as well. So as you can see, the mask is way more delayed. So I'm going to move these keyframes up to match the other animation. There you go. You know what? Before I do that, I'm gonna need some guides. So let me create a guide real quick. So this is gonna be my trusty green guide. I'm gonna put a mask on it and pipe this in. And then I'm gonna make it as thin as I can. And I'm gonna move it over here, right there is good. And then I'm going to make another guide and that one I can move all the way over here. Now I can create my polyline. So I'll take a background, make it white, put a polygon mask on it. and draw a line. There you go. And then border width will be just a touch. 
forgot to connect it. There you go. I can change the butt end and make it thinner. That looks good. And now I can animate it. Keyframe number 100, length will be 1. And I'll go down to maybe keyframe 60, and length will be 0. Give it a little bit of easing. Easing out. Now I can just take this whole stack, pipe it in right next to it, and we put a transform in the middle and flip horizontally and vertically. And I have another one up top. Control G to take the guides off. I can delete the swatches, I don't need those anymore. Do this, set the nodes off, control one to view it full screen, and let's see how it looks. Perfect. Now I want to reverse this animation. So, how do we do that? Let me disable these bottom layers. I don't need these because I'll have something on the edit page. Shift forward to go into the edit page, move this up, take my background, and as you can see, my animation is now showing the background on the bottom. So I'm going to copy this fusion composition, move the playhead up, and paste another instance of it, make a compound clip out of it so it's like video, so I can reverse speed it. And let's see what it looks like. Now we could reverse this animation in Fusion 2 using a time speed node. There's always a million ways of doing the same thing. There you have it, guys. Clean and elegant title animation made in DaVinci Resolve Fusion. As always, the project file is available in the description. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm Sadi and I will see you in the next one. Bye.